It's been days, it's been weeks, hell, it's even been months <laughs> since I've worked on my personal PC. Personal piece, personal, personal computer. Ah! So yeah, if you guys catch my first video on building my own personal rig, we ran into some issues, I'll leave a link below, but this is basically episode two, the continuation of building my very own custom water-cooled PC. As you guys can see, we started off doing an air-cooled version, well, somewhat air-cooled because we are using an AIO cooler, obviously, but the GPUs are air-cooled. So now what we're gonna do is take apart this entire PC build the case that I'm going to be putting it in and basically swap all the parts in here with the EK parts as well. So this is going to be a full custom loop PC. And if you guys are new to the channel, you got to subscribe because it's going to be an epic build and I will promise you guys that much. The wait is definitely going to be worth it. So anyways, I'm not going to bore you guys by putting together this case because I think it'll take me about an hour. There's so many freaking pieces. It's like assembling Ikea furniture, but once I put together the hex gear R40, I will come right back and we will officially begin the build. So this video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. I'm sure you guys are sick of overpaying for razors or having to wait for someone to open up the razor section. And even then, there are so many options to choose from, it's ridiculous. Well, this stops now. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club, for a limited time, they are basically giving away their starter set to new members for only $5. The starter set features their executive razor and three trial-sized versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean. In the first box, you will receive their shave butter, body wash, and butt wipes, which smell incredible, by the way. I know the words smelling incredible and butt shouldn't be in the same sentence. However, this is an exception. You also get their executive razor, which includes their premium handle and a full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. This sounds like an awesome deal. And that's because it's available for a limited time exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash techsource. And I'll drop a link below. So make sure you guys go and check them out. dollarshaveclub.com slash techsource. If putting together Legos is a one and building a rocket ship is a 10, I would say assembling this case is a 9.5. The only reason it's not a 10 is because it's not an actual rocket, guys. There's a reason why it's not available in the US and I don't see a lot of people building inside it. It is a pain in the ass to put this together. Uh, there are so many things that aren't designed well, I guess. It's not CNC machined perfectly. There are some holes that just don't align perfectly. Even some parts of the acrylic pieces, I had to drill my own hole just to make it big enough to uh, screw in the bolts. So yeah, very, very difficult case to work with. If it wasn't so damn sexy and clean, I would have tossed this out the window already and went back to the H700i, believe it or not. But anyways, it is what it is. I finally fi finally put it together. Now let's continue on with the actual build. So, but with that said, it is gonna be a uh, multi-part series. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button because you're gonna see me fail continuously. Already it's like the second episode and I already had troubles with the case. So it's gonna be an interesting ride to say the least. As you guys can see, we took apart the motherboard and as well as the two GPUs from the previous case. Uh, all the other components are taken out. Now we're gonna basically convert this into a water-cooled build and we are doing hard line as well. So it's gonna be very, very interesting build. So anyways, let's go ahead and take off the CPU and clean it real quick because it's got the previous, uh, I almost forgot the name of it, thermal paste. <laughs> So this is the 7980XE, guys. This is an 18-core processor, and this is actually delitted thanks to uh, Steven from Gamers Nexus. So it's gonna perform a lot better, temps are gonna be better, which means I can push the overclock on it further than a stock 7980XE, if that makes any sense. So yeah, very excited to see how much I can push on this once it's um, water-cooled. But anyways, oh yeah, let me clean this thing, actually. Get some alcohol. You know what I've noticed? This thermal paste is so harder to clean. This is from Thermal Grizzly, by the way, guys. I guess that's why it works better than other thermal paste. All right, beautiful. I guess the next step would be to put on the CPU block. So let's start off with that. I really wish I was able to use a mono block for this because I really do want to cool the VRMs. Uh, which is gonna help it overclocking, obviously, and thermals, but there is no available monoblock for the X299 from MSI, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to use a basic CPU block from EK. 
it sucks, but you know, there's nothing I can do. If I were to use a different X299 motherboard, I think, I think EK does have available monoblocks, but I don't want to use any of the other motherboards. This is the one I want to use for my build because of the features that it comes with. This one is actually RGB as well, so it's gonna light up. I don't know, I think the inside area, which is gonna look really cool. You guys know me, I like to spread my thermal paste. I do not like doing the P dot method. I always love it when people in the comments are like, dude, you're putting way too much thermal paste in your, uh, on your CPU. And I'm like, welcome to the channel. First of all, have you not seen my other pre previous builds? I've built like a hundred computers and I've never, well, I've stopped doing the P dot method, so. You guys can relax in the comment section, all right? I, I think I know, at this point, I think I know what I'm kind of doing. These aren't even spinning, they keep spinning in place. I don't know why I keep spinning in place. Is this, did they send me the wrong water block? AMD. Why did it not say that? on the actual box, it just says water block. They sent me an AMD one, guys. Okay, um, it makes sense now, the way the screws aren't going in because it's for the mother, uh, AMD motherboard. You might have to go with the original, original CPU block that they sent me in the first package. At this point, there is no going back, guys. I don't wanna have to go and order and wait again. I'm already doing my build, so I'm just gonna use whatever I have. Yep, it's going in. All right, so that definitely fit. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to go with the non-RGB version, which I'm okay with, as long as it works. That's only really, that's honestly the only difference between that one and this one, is one lights up and the other one doesn't. And one fits and the other one doesn't, so yeah, I don't care. Let's just move on. So ladies and gentlemen, upon further investigation, I realized I don't have any fans for the build. The only thing I have is this beautiful Commander Pro and a few 140 millimeter fans, which don't even fit in this case. So I'm gonna have to request some from Corsair, which means, <laughs> which means I won't be able to do a lot uh, for this episode. So if you're watching this video, that means I somehow mustered enough content to upload it on the channel. But anyways, uh, I think I'll probably just hook up the power supply. I'll hook up the reservoir and see what else I can do. Oh, oh yeah, and put on the GPU block. So I think that will be enough for uh, part one, or I should say episode, what episode is this? Episode two? Episode two. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and put together the GPU blocks. Where is my babies? Yeah, the twins, right over here, guys. Mm, mm, two 1080 Ti's, FTW. Three from EVGA, of course. Unfortunately, I'm gonna take these precious apart and put on the GPU blocks, which must be in this box over here. All right, so actually, I think we have four GPU blocks. Uh, there's only two that I'm gonna be using, actually, which I think is the Nickel Plexi. Let me see which one that is. I hope there's two plates in here because I'm missing. Nope, there is one. It has to be in here somewhere. All right, let's figure out which GPU block I'm gonna be using. Let's pop this open one by one. Because there's an old black one and then there's a clear one. I wanna use the one that's clear because it looks the sexiest. Yes, there you go. This is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna be using two of these bad boys, so just have to find the other one. Yep, found the second one right over here. So this was the original one that was sent to me. What the f This is the same one. 
Uh, okay. I think they sent me two extra by accident. Let me double check, because that is not supposed to happen. Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess they did. They sent me two extra ones. What? What the heck is happening here? Okay, um, I guess I'll give them away because I'm not gonna use them and I don't wanna go through the hassle of selling them. So if you guys want a GPU block for an EVGA 1080 Ti FTW3 card, let me know by dropping a comment stating specifically that you want the GPU block and drop a like on the video because I'm only gonna select the people that want the GPU block. Please don't enter the giveaway if you guys aren't gonna use it. And this is US only, so please, 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 that again, I'm in, I'm in, that again, I'm sure there's people out there are gonna enter to get it and sell it anyways. There's a, there's a lot of Phillips out there, so whatever. If you guys want it, just let me know in the comment section because I do have two extra ones. You can only request one, you can't have both though. So before I put on the back plate on the GPU, um, I have to put the GPU bracket on there first, but I do wanna custom paint both of these to red and I picked up some paint from Home Depot. So we're gonna go downstairs, actually paint these and paint a few other things as well. So yeah, let's, let's go. So we're gonna do the reservoir mounting bracket red, PCI brackets red, GPU bracket red, and the M.2 shield we're actually gonna paint white. So apparently there's something going on with the pieces here that is not letting me paint over it. As you guys can see, uh, there's some white spots on the PCI brackets and even the reservoir mounting brackets. So I don't know what that is exactly, why it's preventing me from painting. It's too late to go back, yeah. So I'll try and add in a few more coats. Maybe that solves the issue. Otherwise, we might have to sand everything down and uh, try again because I have no idea what these random white spots are. Like I would paint over it and then it would slowly come back up. I don't know why, it's, it's weird. I've never actually experienced this before. I don't know if it's the type of metal or maybe there was something on it, but these are all clean. I cleaned them before I brought them down here. So I'm just gonna continue painting the other stuff and then we're gonna leave these to dry overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and check on them. All right, so while we wait for the paint to dry, we're gonna hook up the power supply and then probably come back tomorrow and continue the build. But for you guys, it's gonna be only one video. The power supply is actually in an interesting spot in this case. It's in the front and the fan is gonna be facing inside. So it's gonna be popped right over here. So there's two things I can do to the power supply. Uh, option number one is I can add a power supply cover that pretty much covers this entire side. Or option number two, I can just skin the power supply or paint it. So I can skin this side white or red and I can paint the grills and this side white or red. Uh, the only reason why I'm aiming towards option one is because, let me show you guys the side panel. There's not that many bezels. As you guys can see, it's only maybe about an inch and a half on each side. So if I were to cover the front of the case, you're still gonna see the power supply and the rest of the cables on here. So that is why I really want to just build a power supply cover to cover up this entire side over here, probably in white, just so it goes with the build. And that way I can cover up the power supply and all of the cables. So I think that's what I will probably do. So in the meantime, I guess we can hook up the power supply, hook up all the cables, that way I can use that and then measure around it to see what exactly or how big the power supply cover is gonna be. If you guys remembered in an unboxing video, I did receive a, an acrylic bender. So it's actually be the first time I'll be using that. And uh, yeah, it should be very interesting and fun 
to see me actually bend acrylic for the first time. But anyways, let's go ahead and hook up the power supply. All right, time to hook up the cables. These are from Cable Mod. Got the sexy white and red pattern with the aluminum white cable combs. This is gonna look really sick in this build. These are actually the replacement cables they sent me because if you guys watched part one, the cables were the reason why my computer wasn't turning on. It wasn't the power supply. So yeah, I'm hoping that these actually work because I haven't tested them. But I trust in the cable mod, so yeah. I should say I trust in cable mod now. I know I told you guys I was gonna hook up two SSDs in RAID 0 for my uh, storage, but I think I'm just gonna do one two terabyte SSD from WD because two of them is overkill. Because I already have two one terabyte M.2s from Samsung. So I think that's gonna be plenty, plus I can use this as storage. And the main reason actually is because I have an eight terabyte external storage device from uh, Seagate that I'm using to store most of my files. So that is why I don't wanna bombard this PC with that much storage space, which I'm not gonna even use in the first place, to be honest. Of course, I gotta go with a red SATA cable. Let's hook this up. I don't know where exactly this is connected to. It's probably somewhere in the back. Let me flip this over. All right, I think it hooks up to here or something. I'm not really sure. It goes in like that, but the only issue is I would even install the motherboard. How the hell am I gonna screw it in from the other side? Oh, Jesus. Oh, I guess I can take this apart. I can take these screws apart actually, mount the SSD on here and then mount it back on. So that's actually an easy fix. Right, let's mount this closer to the bottom because the SATA ports on the motherboard are closer on the bottom, so it'll be easier to reach. So somewhere like this. You know what I'm just realizing? Look how much space I have to work with for cable management. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. There isn't any cable grommets, there isn't any zip ties, tie downs. I mean, it's gonna be a challenge to say the least. Oh, also, what do you guys think about uh, Goku Ultra Instinct mode? Let me know what your feedback is in the comment section. I think it looks like a pretty badass mural painting to have in the background of my videos, but let me know what you guys think. I, I feel like it's a little too distracting, but halfway through the video, I feel like you guys will get used to it. All right, here we go. So that's there. Let's hook this back on here. All right, so this is what the build currently is looking like. Um, we had a bumpy start, but honestly, I think we're finally back on track. Uh, we're still waiting for the paint to dry for the graphics card and a few other parts of the case. In the meantime, I'm gonna order the fans, so that'll be here hopefully in the next few days, and we can jump on that, install radiators, a reservoir, and all that good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and cut to the next day and take a look at our paint job, so yeah.